Welcome to Cell Science Systems. In this tutorial, we will discuss the Methyl Detox Profile Results Report. Methylation is a biochemical process that occurs in every human cell. It involves the donation of active methyl groups to other molecules. The structure of methyl groups consists of a carbon atom bonded to three hydrogen atoms, CH3. Methyl groups are very basic molecules, but they serve crucial roles and have a significant influence on cellular function. Methylation is required for many processes in the body. It is needed for our cells to divide, DNA and RNA synthesis, early central nervous system development, hormone clearance, energy production, histamine clearance, differentiation of our immune cells, neurotransmitter metabolism, and detoxification. There are two kinds of methylation. Metabolic methylation involves forming or breaking down proteins like stress hormones, toxins, histamine, estrogen, neurotransmitters, immune cells, coenzyme Q10, phospholipids, and DNA bases. DNA methylation is the regulation of the expression of genes as methylation is attached to specific sections of DNA. Gene expression is influenced by methylation patterns as well as diet, nutrition, and environment. This is known as epigenetics. Methylation of DNA plays a crucial part in epigenetics and which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off. For most, but not all genes, less methylation would result in the genes being turned on, more methylation would result in the genes being turned off. For some genes, limiting the expression of them is helpful, but for other genes like tumor suppressor genes, turning them off is not helpful. Considering the importance of methylation and its many functions, decreased activity in the methylation pathway and a shortage of methyl groups can lead to an extensive variety of issues. The list you see here includes just some of the issues that may be associated with impaired methylation. Any excess or insufficiency of specific nutrients and environmental factors can impact methylation negatively and therefore gene expression and overall well-being. The methyl detox profile is best used within the context of a comprehensive assessment along with evaluation of gut health, symptoms reported by the patient, micronutrient status, food sensitivities, and nutrition and lifestyle choices. Understanding methylation genetics and where the SNPs, or the single nucleotide polymorphisms, or variants, exist, provides insight needed for the health problems or symptoms that are occurring. Here you see genes tested in the Cell Science Systems Methyl Detox Profile. The genes are represented by the color-coded rectangles. The methyl detox profile identifies a person variance in five of the genes involved in the folate cycle and the methionine cycle. There are other genes involved in this pathway that are not included in the cell science systems methyl detox profile, so it is important to keep that in mind. These genes are encoding for enzymes or they are acting as enzymes themselves. Enzymes are needed to help drive the process to the next step. A single nucleotide polymorphism, abbreviated SNP, pronounced SNP, is a variation in the genetic sequence that affects one of the basic building blocks or bases of DNA called a nucleotide. SNPs, also called variants or variations, occur normally throughout a person's DNA. These variants may be unique or they may occur in many individuals. Whether or not variants in the genes exist is indicated by color-coded results. Green, or the wild type, what occurs most naturally. No variants, person is homozygous negative for that particular gene. Yellow for heterozygous, heterozygous positive. One parent passed on a variant and the other parent passed on the wild type. Red for homozygous positive, both parents passed on a variant. With variants in genes, it is assumed that the enzyme activity is lessened. Heterozygous positive, indicated in yellow, means the enzyme is lessened somewhat. Homozygous positive, indicated in red, would be lessened more. 
But with the proper nutrient support, we can help the genes work more efficiently and sort of bypass the weaknesses in this pathway. As we discuss these variants in this pathway, please keep in mind that individualization is very important. The level of nutrient intake to optimize methylation status varies from individual to individual, and even if variants in these genes exist, intervention may not be needed. The patient may have balanced methylation. So just because a patient has a SNP or a variant that might put him at risk for imbalanced methylation does not mean he actually has a problem with methylation. Proper nutrient support and a health-promoting lifestyle to support methylation can lead to balanced methylation. And a patient might not have any variants that predispose to impaired methylation. Let's say the person's results indicate he has no variants in these genes, green for all these genes. He might assume his methylation status is good, but he might have impaired methylation resulting from poor nutrition and an unhealthy lifestyle. So that underscores how important it is for us to be focusing on good nutrition and to be following a health promoting lifestyle no matter what our genetic makeup is. As we look at each individual gene in the methyl detox profile, we will first look at where the enzyme acts in this pathway on page one of the report, then what alleles or variant forms of each gene are tested on page two, and in which version or versions of the variants occur. Then we will refer to page three, which summarizes what nutrients to address the foods to emphasize, and what supplemental nutrients may need to be considered to support that part of the pathway if needed. On page three, you will see suggestions to address the need for particular key nutrients that are essential for the enzyme activity and or act as cofactors or helpers in that part of the process. With regard to how to address the need for any of these nutrients, Food intake is always what we would suggest be assessed first. You might begin by taking a look at the good food sources of the particular nutrient on page four of this report. Determine how much and how often those food sources are being consumed to assess the likelihood of an optimal or suboptimal intake. It's best to consume a variety of those good food sources, but avoid any of these foods that may cause allergic or sensitivity reactions. The best option to address the need for nutrients would be to address the cellular nutri nutrient status by utilizing the cell science system's cellular micronutrient assay, which assesses sufficiency of all the nutrients that are necessary to support methylation and more. The guesswork is removed. Digestion and gut health is important to address as well. Perhaps enough of the good food sources are being consumed regularly but poor digestion and absorption may be decreasing the nutrient availability. Supporting digestion and gut health would be necessary. If supplemental nutrients are necessary, practitioner guidance is very important. There are active forms and the most bioavailable forms of the micronutrients that may be preferred. It would be best that patients not guess at the doses of particular nutrients to take. Practitioner guidance is necessary. Medications may interfere with nutrient status, so this is also a very important consideration. The nutrients listed and the amounts in supplementation mentioned are very general guidelines. Again, the level of nutrient intake to optimize methylation status varies from individual to individual. One size does not fit all. Although it seems natural to start at the bottom of the page with the folate pathway, when there are variants in COMPT, the gene you see at the top of the page here, it is best to start here and make sure the right nutrition is supporting COMPT before addressing the other genes in the methyl detox profile. Some folks with COMPT variants do not tolerate supplementation of too much methyl B12 and or methyl folate or other methyl donors which may be suggested to support other variants in this pathway until they support COMPT properly with the right nutrition. Looking at the top of page one, COMT, this person's results shows heterozygous COMPT. One parent gave this patient a variant and the other parent the wild type. 
page two shows us which version of the gene was tested and what the patient inherited. This patient was heterozygous positive for the VAL108158 MET. The COMS gene provides instructions for making an enzyme called catechol-O-methyltransferase. In the brain, COMS helps break down chemical messengers, neurotransmitters, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. COMS is particularly important in an area at the front of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, which organizes and coordinates information from other parts of the brain. This region is involved with personality, planning, inhibition of behaviors, abstract thinking, emotion, and short-term memory. COMPT also plays a protective role in the inactivation of catechol estrogens, substances that are estrogenically active and can harm genetic information in cells, leading to epigenetic alterations. Examples are E2, estradiol, and E1, estron. The catechol metabolites of E2 and E1, in particular four hydroxylated estrogens, have been shown to be carcinogenic. COMPT eliminates their ability to impact gene expression. Reduced enzyme activity may result in damage to DNA, reduced clearance, and therefore high levels of catecholamines, dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine. Reduced enzyme activity may result in accumulation of catecholoestrogens. Anxiety, panic, depression, aggression, hyperactivity, increased sensitivity to pain, sleep difficulties, irritability, addiction, as well as infertility, hormone imbalances, and symptoms associated with those may be symptoms reported by those with COMT variants. CME, or S-adenosyl methionine, is the precursor to COMT, in other words, what leads to the formation of it. And methionine leads to the formation of CME. So addressing methionine status is suggested. Remember, it is best to consider food first. Amino acids like methionine come from protein. So we need to ask, is enough protein being consumed on a daily basis? Or is it possible that not enough is being consumed to support methylation? Perhaps digestion needs to be addressed, as mentioned previously, to make sure the protein consumed is digested properly and therefore amino acids assimilated. The cellular micronutrient assay from Cell Science Systems provides valuable insight regarding micronutrient status within cells, as mentioned. That assay also assesses amino acid status, including methionine. The helper or cofactor that supports COMPT is magnesium. When it comes to supplementing with methylated B vitamins, as may be needed to support other variants in this pathway we will discuss, too much overall and too fast can exacerbate symptoms for folks with COMPT variants. If B12 is needed, it may be best to consider using hydroxy or adenosyl cobalamin and add methylfolate if needed with gradual dose increase last if that's necessary. Other recommendations to consider when supporting COMPT, consumption of COMPT inhibitors like high dose tea catechins from grain and black tea and quercetin may need to be limited in the case of reduced COMPT enzyme activity. Further inhibition of COMPT activity may result, so intake of those may need to be adjusted. To further support COMPT activity, a variety of plant-based foods and a variety of colors of fruit, vegetables, legumes, nuts and seeds, whole grains is encouraged. Include plenty of cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, watercress, arugula, and bok choy. It's best to avoid estrogen boosters. Avoid xenoestrogens, dairy, parabens, and alcohol, and nourish the body properly to support liver detoxification. Smoking is never a good idea. And too much strenuous exercise may need to be limited for patients who are having difficulty due to COMPT. And COMPT variants may limit the body's ability to reduce stress hormones. So incorporating stress management techniques is always a good idea. Adenosyl homocysteinase encodes for the enzyme S-adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase, abbreviated S-A-H-H, which converts S-adenosyl homocysteine, or S-A-H, the metabolic byproduct of CME methylation, to homocysteine. 
AACY controls the intracellular S-adenosyl homocysteine concentration that is crucial for transmethylation reactions. AACY deficiency causes elevated methionine. This person does not have variants in AACY as indicated in green. Page two shows the alleles that were tested. Because NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, the active form of niacin, is a cofactor or helper for this enzyme, the need for niacin may be considered to support NAD synthesis. Address the need for vitamin B3 once again with food intake and nutrient testing if available. Overload of copper and or iron can further inhibit AACY. So supplementation of iron and or copper may need to be reduced or discontinued. Folic acid, the synthetic inactive form of folate that is often seen in supplementation and fortified foods must undergo enzymatic conversion to the active form of folate, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. MTHFR, or methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, drives this reaction that produces the active form of folate, which in turn is used in the synthesis of methionine from homocysteine. L5-MTHF then plays a key role in methylation by donating a single methyl group to another molecule. The most studied variants are C677T and A1298C. Variants in MTHFR may result in reduced methyltransferase activity, MTR or MTRR, and in turn, low SAMe and elevated homocysteine. This person is homozygous positive for C677T, meaning both parents passed on variants. With regard to the other variant, A1298C, this person was homozygous negative, meaning neither parent passed on variants. Although MTHFR variants are associated with a number of disorders mentioned previously, if not supported properly with nutrition and lifestyle, elevated homocysteine appears to be a significant link to many of those conditions. How to support MTHFR? Address the need for folate. 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is also the predominant form found naturally in food. As always, consider food intake first. Good sources of folate would be green leafy vegetables, legumes, citrus fruits, beets, and whole grains. So if not consuming a good variety of those consistently, that certainly needs to be improved upon. Currently, folic acid is the form used to fortify foods due to its stability and resistance to oxidation and it's often included in supplements as well, but folic acid may not be the preferred form for those with MTHFR variants. If supplementation is needed, using the active form, 5-MTHF, would be preferred. Also address the need for the helpers in this part of the process, riboflavin, niacin, magnesium, and zinc. Consider the intake of the good food sources of these, which you find listed in this report, as well as checking nutrient status test results if available. Keep in mind that some drugs may block folate or increase homocysteine, so the practitioner prescribing medication will benefit from knowing if there are variants in MTHFR or any part of the methylation pathway. MTR, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate homocysteine methyltransferase encodes for the enzyme methionine synthase which drives the final step in methionine synthesis. MTR converts homocysteine to methionine by transferring a methyl group from methylcobalamin, meaning methyl B12, to homocysteine to form methionine. The methyl group is obtained from the 5-MTHF, the active form of folate, which we just discussed. Variants in MTR may result in reduced enzyme activity, increased homocysteine, decreased SAMe, and increased oxidative stress. This person is heterozygous positive for MTR, meaning one parent passed on a variant and the other parent passed on the wild type. How to support MTR? Assess the B12 status. Are foods from animal sources being consumed on a regular basis? How is digestion and absorption of B12? As we get older, we might not be as efficient at digesting B12 for a number of reasons. 
Check B12 status if nutrient test results are available. Again, it is best to be careful with methyl B supplementation. Those with COMT variants may tolerate supplementing hydroxyadenosyl B12 better than methyl B12. Address the need for zinc by assessing food intake or nutrient test results, as zinc is the helper in this part of the process. Minimize alcohol intake. Ethanol and its metabolic product, acetaldehyde, have been shown to inhibit MTR function in the brain. 5. Methyl tetrahydrofolate homocysteine methyltransferase reductase encodes for the enzyme methionine synthase reductase, which remethylates cobalamin by using the active form of folate for use by methionine. MTRR provides MTR with a necessary cofactor. Variants in MTRR may cause decreased methionine synthase, or MTR, activity, increased homocysteine, increased oxidative stress, and decreased SAMe. This person is homozygous positive for MTRR, meaning both parents passed on variants. To support MTRR, address the need for vitamin B12, as discussed with MTR variants, taking a look at the food intake of B12 or nutrient tests, hydroxycobalamin may need to be utilized rather than methylcobalamin, and address the need for the helpers in this part of the process, riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, and niacin, which is vitamin B3. When supplementing with the active forms of B vitamins, such as methylfolate or methylcobalamin, supplementation is best initiated slowly at a low dose and increase very gradually. Be aware of symptoms. Potential side effects to be aware of include the list you see here. These effects may be observed in those who possess the COMT variant or variants as we discussed previously. Homocysteine is a biomarker used for assessing methylation status and it is suggested to monitor homocysteine levels every three to six months or so. Homocysteine in excess can contribute to damage of the arteries, cardiovascular disease, accelerated aging, neurodegenerative disorders, and other conditions. Genetic information is certainly useful, but it's more important to look at the genetic results alongside functional methylation markers like this one. Others may include the folate, B12, and methionine status. As mentioned previously, genes do not define us, and it is best to address the need for intervention not based on genes themselves, but based on biomarkers like this one and other details regarding the patient's health status. Methylation is very complex. The research on methylation and how our nutrition and lifestyle choices impact methylation and overall health is ongoing. It's important to understand that it's not yet clear how long-term high-dose methylated Bs or other methylation supplements impacts health or disease. It's necessary to proceed with caution with supplementation and address and support the body's mechanisms for methylation balance. Support gut health. Bacteria plays a role in the methylation cycle. For example, bifidobacteria are folate producers, while lactobacilli are folate consumers. So dysbiosis and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, can impact methylation detrimentally. Gastrointestinal health and digestion may influence absorption, physiology, metabolism, and immunity. Poor digestion and or absorption of nutrients may inhibit normal enzyme functions and may have greater effects on enzymes with variants. Gut bacteria and yeast can produce aldehydes, ammonia, benzoic acid, and phenols, which need to be broken down by the liver. Candida albicans can potentially produce carcinogenic levels of acetaldehyde, which inhibits methionine synthase reducing methylation capacity. It's important to avoid food sensitivities, reduce inflammation, and also important to reduce competition for methyl donors because they deplete methyl groups. These include environmental toxins, alcohol, diuretics, heavy metals, mycotoxins, nicotine, high histamine intake, high estrogen, both acute and chronic stress, infections, and over or under exercising. Also address exposure to methylation inhibitors, drugs such as oral contraceptives, PPIs, 
antibiotics, and others. Address nutrient insufficiencies. If cellular nutrition assay results are available, address the need for them this way. Include a variety of whole, colorful plant-based foods to enhance nutrient status, provide antioxidant benefit, anti-inflammatory benefit, and promote healthy DNA methylation and epigenetic expression. Methylation adaptogens are compounds from plants that promote balance by promoting appropriate methylation and by inhibiting abnormal methylation. There are many adaptogens that have been identified, such as anthocyanins and berries, betanins from beetroot, Swiss chard, amaranth, cumeric acid from peanuts, navy beans, carrots, tomatoes, basil, garlic, wine vinegar, barley, and sulforaphane from broccoli and other cruciferous vegetables. And there are many others. Consuming a variety of colorful plant foods is the key to obtaining a variety of these adaptogens. A great resource to access for more information about methylation adaptogens is entitled Methylation Diet and Lifestyle, Methylation Adaptogens by Dr. Kara Fitzgerald and Ramalee Hodges. Imbalanced methylation can lead to an extensive variety of issues. The information regarding SNPs within the methylation pathway is best used within the context of a full assessment. Intervention may not be necessary. Utilize appropriate biomarkers, for example, homocysteine and nutrient status to assess methylation status. The control of methylation is complex. The goal should be balanced methylation. Any excess or insufficiency of specific nutrients and environmental factors can impact methylation negatively and therefore gene expression and overall well-being. Address food and lifestyle first. Use plant-based compounds, adaptogens, to achieve balanced methylation and use caution with supplementation and monitor patients' responses to methyl donor supplements. For more information regarding methylation genetics, please visit the Cell Science Systems website, the education section. For this test and every test that you order from Cell Science Systems, you are welcome to a half hour complimentary education session with a member of the nutrition team of the Cell Science Systems sister company, Previ Medica. We are here to help. Please contact your account representative or our customer service team at customerservice at cellsciencesystems.com or the number you see here. Thank you for joining me today. We wish you and your patients the very best of health.